Hey guys, so it's really cloudy and overcast. It looks like it could snow at any minute, but our temperatures are far too warm for that. But I want to show you how to make what I call flaming snow or a fire snow. So it's really simple to make. It's a fun chemistry experiment and kids would love it, but it can also serve a useful purpose in an emergency or on a camping or hiking trip. I just thought I'd give you a little bit better close up because you couldn't quite see it on that first take, but this is what I call fire snow. It's really easy to put together and it serves, like I said, a very useful purpose in an emergency or a practical purpose on a camping trip. Now this is only going to require a couple of ingredients and I made a video, I guess it's been almost two years ago, I believe it was 2023 December, and I'll put a link to the description up above. But if you want to make your own fire snow, you can do it without any cost on one of the components. One of the components you will have, or you may already have it around your home, but calcium acetate is what we need. And that's what this in this bag right here is calcium acetate, but you can make your own. So it's not complicated. It's not dangerous. It's just something that takes a process to make. So take a look at that video link there if you don't want to purchase it. If you do want to purchase this, I'll put a link in the description down below. Now, as far as this calcium acetate, we need one part calcium acetate. So I'm just going to take a measuring cup and I guess I'm going to do about one cup, one even cup into our mixing bowl. And there's a very special way of dissolving this into our product. It needs to be warm water. You can't put it directly in another component, which I'll talk about in just a second, but you need to take one part calcium acetate. I don't think we're quite full there. I want to go to the one cup mark. So I'm going to put the exact ingredients or the exact mixtures down below, but there is a little bit of play there. It's not exactly precise depending on the quality of your calcium acetate and some of the other ingredients. So that's our first ingredient is one solid cup of calcium acetate. Now next we need to mix the calcium acetate with warm water. So we're going to do two parts warm water. I'm going to mix it, mix it first with warm water and then I'm going to get a stir stick and mix that up and then I'll add the second cup after I've did a little bit of mixing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an old paint stick and just stir this for a few minutes and try not to breathe this because you can have a little bit of dust coming out or if it's extremely hot water, you can have a little bit of steam. So just kind of stand back from it and slowly mix before you add your second cup in. All right, so I've added our second cup of water and I'm stirring that in. Now, our next component is going to be any type of alcohol. You can do isopryl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. You can do 99%, 91, or even 70, but in this case, I'm going to do a very specific type of alcohol, and that is denatured alcohol, and I'm going to add two parts denatured alcohol to our solution. Now, as I said, I often use this denatured alcohol in a lot of different stoves I have, homemade heaters, homemade stoves, so we're just going to add, as I said, two cups of this. Try not to make too much of a mess there. That's about a cup and a half. And then we're going to add another half cup and then we're just going to stir until we get a very specific result happening. Now as you can see once we have did some mixing we start getting this really white gel like substance and it will thicken up over time and I'm going to show you the first batch I made earlier today. It is as thick as snow as you can see. And it was a little bit thicker when I first mixed it, but there's a little bit of variations in the formula. Like I said, it depends a lot on the concentration of alcohol, how good is your calcium acetate. So just remember there's going to be some variables, so you may have to do a little bit of experimentation when you go to make this fire snow or a flaming snowball. Now the way I like to store this is I like to have a container that has a lid where I can completely seal it and then I can use it as I need to. But before it becomes a really thick gel, I'll sometimes just pour it up in this old ice cream container and I save all sorts of containers. And so it's going to thicken and you can actually leave it out and let it thicken, let the alcohol evaporate just a little bit. And it'll become a little bit more like a gel, but you'll need to make sure you label this as to what it is because it definitely looks like it could possibly be ice cream. But this, once it sets, it's going to be very thick. As I showed you earlier, the first batch I made is extremely thick so it just sticks to my paint stick just like snow would. So that's why it's referred to as flaming snow or fire snow because it resembles snow so much. So it's really a fun project but I'm going to show you some practical uses for it in and around the greenhouse and something you could also use 
on ha camping or hiking tri trips. Now this is the formula I'd made in that video and it's actually been in this container for well over a year going on two years so you can make your own calcium acetate and it will last indefinitely as long as you don't mix it once you mix it you need to seal it so you don't have any evaporation from the alcohol now I'll show you real quick how you can turn this into a great heater cooking device or whatever you want to use it for whether you're on the trail or you're having to heat in the case of an emergency but we're just going to take roughly two to four tablespoons of the fire snow as we call it and put it in this cookie sheet and then I'm going to show you how well it burns and then previously I'd, I'd made a stove that got a lot of views on it so this is I'm going to set directly below it but I'll bring it back out and show you and you can take a look at that video as well but this is our fuel source and this will burn for quite a while basically what we've done is we've created a gel type of alcohol fuel all right so I'm going to light these and show you their practical use here and around the greenhouse and so these will burn for quite a while but this video I had made previously about taking this piece of pipe and what a great heater it made and this thing will put out very quickly a lot of heat so it heats up the pipe the air is pulled in from the left and pulled out to the right you can direct the air wherever you want in the room so take a look at the video up above that shows you exactly how to put this together but as you can see these are burning quite well I have to put something under them because this upper pan will get quite hot so if you need a good fuel source for a camping trip, hiking trip, emergency cooking, power outage, or natural disaster, the flaming snow or the snow fireball will work great. We'll do a little bit of test in just a second to see how hot this gets and see some air circulating or moving out of our little homemade stove here. Now I can feel air quickly exiting from the right side of our homemade stove here or heater. And it looks like it's coming out at about a little bit over 200 degrees at the center of the pipe it's about the same temperature I'm hoping you can see that on camera the intake side is quite cool not 72 71 so it's room temperature air but as it wakes makes its way through the pipe it gets quite hot and then it exits out here and you can direct this so take a look at that video if you're interested in how to put this together and some of the benefits of using it but as you can see our fire snow is working great. Now I usually get a lot of the same questions when I make homemade stoves or heaters and the most common I guess is, is how long will it burn? Well that depends on what the purity of the fuel or alcohol you're using and the quality of the calcium acetate. And as you can see I put this out and that's the second question I often get is how, how do you put it out? You basically just cover it and then smother the oxygen out of it and then it'll stop burning pretty quickly. Of course you want to be very careful use your carbon monoxide detector, smoke detector, have a fire extinguisher handy. So it's just common sense stuff when you're dealing with an open flame. But if you have a power outage, an emergency situation, if you're on a camping trip and you're surrounded by wet wood and no way to light it, having some of this in your backpack will be a lifesaver. So fire snow or flaming snowballs, whatever they call it in chemistry class, it really works great and it will last indefinitely as long as you keep it in a nice tightly sealed container that won't allow the, the alcohol to evaporate too much out of it. Now I can almost bet I know what the last question might be and that's the safety of using something like this. Well there's always the chance when you have an open flame that you could have carbon monoxide and there's the dangers of an open flame but sterno is basically what you're making here. You're making a gel type of heat and if you've ever been to a buffet restaurant or if you've ever went to a wedding they're almost surely keeping the food warm with sterno canisters and they're used inside so somebody had asked me before it's not are you not supposed to use sterno inside well they're used inside all the time at big events and where there's a lot of people and it's usually like I said just to keep food warm but there's a lot of other uses you can use the fire snow for which is making food cooking heating and just keeping it stored away safely is the key component making sure it's out of reach of kids. Now this was a kind of a heater I'd made. I guess it was either last year or the year before, but this original idea came out of an outdoor magazine. And basically I put in some of our homemade fire snow in there and it will work great as a heater. If you want to take a look at how to make this, it's basically just a cake can, some, this is like a pineapple juice can. And there's a couple more components I've put in there along with this handle that makes it safer to open and close. And let's see, I'm almost running out of fuel here on my lighter. But there you go, it's burning. I hope you can see that. A little bit of a flame going there. And so this is a very, very old 
heater I saw in one of my dad's outdoor camping magazines from years ago. And so take a look at the video linked up above and you'll see how to make this little simple heater that works great for camping or emergencies. You keep it in a pantry and whenever you need it, you'd have a way to heat pretty quickly and you could actually cook just a little bit on top as long as you don't have too big of a container. So guys, this is a really fun thing to do when you have really cold weather moving in and you just want to make something as a backup or emergency heater if you're planning a camping or hiking trip. Having something like this could be great. Just have it in a sealed container where it won't spill out into your other things like clothes and your camping gear. So take a look at that uh, video or one of the three videos I've linked there and I think you'll find something interesting in either one of them. If you like the video and you really want to help the channel, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. If you have a question, I hope you'll become a subscriber first because I always get tons and tons of questions and I put the people who are subscribers, I can filter them and I put them to the front of the list. So guys, I really appreciate you watching and have a great day.